Hi everybody, this is Mark Siegel, and in this video I am going to show you how to create your own daily agenda template using Google Slides that you can use and customize to whatever you want to do. Now, um, I got this particular uh, layout that you've got right, you can see right here, from a Teachers Paid Teachers free site by Carolyn Contreras, and I'll throw that uh, linked into the description for this video. But there's a couple things that I wanted to show you about it. What was really nice that I really liked about it is that you can very easily um, put in your date here in whatever format you wanted to do. Um, you can create your checklist, so you can add or delete whatever you want to do. Um, you can put in your student reminders here, which is a nice addition. Um, you don't have a text box for here. But other than that, nothing else is customizable on this page. So like, if I don't like this today, you will, um, in this font or whatever, there's nothing I can do to, f to modify this. The way that Carolyn built this, it's now a static image that all I can do is put in an agenda, put in a date, and put in reminders. Of, of course, I can add my, my own pieces to this need materials, but there's no way I can customize it. I can't change the fonts, I can't change the colors, I can't change the layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do and create this exact same thing for yourself, and then I'm going to show you how to make it a template for yourself so that you can uh, recreate this for other uh, agendas that you're going to use down the road. If you want to modify it, whatever you want to do, like change the color schemes um, for whatever the month is or holiday, etc. I'm going to show you how to do all that. So. I'm already in a Google slide, so I'm just going to add a new Google slide, and I'm going to make a nice blank one because I want plenty of space to work with. So you'll notice that Carolyn, when she started, she had this big block, a uh, big block that went across the top. She's got, actually got a couple of them. One of the things I really love is the shapes features. So if you go into shapes, you'll see a lot of different images. For example, you'll see this folded corner one. That's where she made her blue post-it note looking thing. So we're going to use that in a second. You've got a lot of different shapes that you can play with. Um, for the top, I'm going to just build a rect use a rectangle, so that's at the very top, and I'm going to draw that rectangle so that it goes all the way across my page and goes right there. Now, if you've never used uh, Google Slides before, you will notice that there's a blue bar that goes directly underneath that. That's a measurement tool. I'll show you what how that helps me later. Um, now, I made that a little bit thicker than I wanted, so I'm going to just change the... Uh, the thickness a little bit, and of course I'm going to use the fill tool and I'm going to make it black. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, Carolyn on the side, she added another shape that is all white, and that's going to be for her date. So I'm going to make my date about yay big. Again, the default is this gray, but I want it to be white. And of course, I can type into shapes. I don't have to add a separate text box over the top of it. Now, I can add a text box over it if I want to um, if I want to use this and not change this. But I can write um, date is. So that's just a reminder for me to insert my date here. Um, I can pre-format my font. Now, when I go to font and I scroll down, you can see all the fonts that I've already got preloaded into mine. I play with a lot of fonts. But of course, if you want to add more fonts, more fonts is at the top. When you click more fonts, you'll go to all the different Google fonts, and then you can go through and sort the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And obviously, anything you've already got is already going to come up in blue, but you can then change it. Like if you want to say show all fonts, no, I want handwriting fonts. I'm going to need this one later. So for example, um, let's say I wanted this Mark script. I can add it. Boom. Now Mark script is one of my options. And now I can change my date, see how it says today's date is. But for the moment, I'm going to leave mine as, I like this one. Now, the other thing that you notice is she's got this today you will. So now I actually have to add a text box, which is this little button here. So I am going to add a text box that is going to flow down the side. And in this text box, I'm going to write, today you will. But the problem is, it's in black, and my background is in black. So I'm going to quick highlight it. I just hit Control-A to highlight that. And I'm going to change my font color, and I'm going to change it to white so I can see, so I can see it. So now I want to go into that script font that I was playing with a second ago, Mark script. And I'm going to write to, I'm going to retype this, 
today you will and I'm gonna preformat my size just a little bit bigger okay obviously I can play around with this however I want I can go 30 I can go bigger if I want to maybe 48 now I'm getting a little too big um, I can of course change its thickness um, but you'll see that it's pretty much going to be stuck. Now the other thing that a lot of people don't do is they don't play with the height alignment in a text box. So you'll come over here and you'll see that there's this alignment tool. So I can align it to the top, or I can align it to the middle, or I can align it to the bottom, whatever I want to do. But I like this align to the middle. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you that, um, as I tell my students all the time, think outside the box. <clears throat> so you'll notice that my text box runs a little bit above where I want, need it to be, and that's because I and a little bit above where it goes here. You notice that I can move around. I don't have to stick inside the rectangles that I've already created. I can move them around a little to get things to be centered where I want them to be centered. Uh, so now I'm going to add that big blue post-it note that she had on the side. So under shapes, I'm going to go back down and there's this folded corner. So I like a nice big folded corner. So you'll notice that our little red line is lined, pops up on the right hand side here. Now what that right, red line is telling me is that the right side of this new shape is aligned with the right side of the today you will text box. So if I change it to, if I want it to end there, it'll be that big. If I bring it this way, you'll see that a red line appears here, and you'll see that a little blue measurement tool is now telling me that my blue folded corners rectangle that I'm putting in here is the exact same size as my text box up above. Okay, so just little things to help you measure things out later. So in this one, this ugly gray again. So let's change that fill color and let's put in that blue. Let's put in a blue. Light cornflower blue looks good to me. Uh, actually, I like the baby blue a little bit better. Just to keep it similar to hers. Um, now I'm going to add it again. I'm going to add a text box. And on that text box, I am going to put in my to do list for today. Now I made my text box about the size that I wanted it, so I'm going to center my font in there and I'm going to change the size a little bit. And I'm going to, let's just give it something a little bit, uh, I don't really like that. So the problem is now I get into the whole, now I'm going to play with fonts and my design brain starts to take over. Okay, so here's my to-do list for today. Now, I want that to stay put, so I'm going to add a secondary text box underneath it. And my secondary text box will be, now I'm just going to put in a checkbox reminder for myself. Now, that is under the bullets. So you, here you see that there is the numbered bullets, and then there are the bulleted list that's here. And one of the options is a checkbox. So, agenda, items here. So that's just a reminder for myself of where things are going to go. Okay. Um, now, on the left hand side, she has this need these materials, and then she has this remember thing on the bottom. So I am going to go back to my shapes, and I'm going to add in a shape, and you will notice that I've got a lot of different funky shapes to work with. I also have some callouts that I can work with. Um, arrows that I can work with if I find something that works. Okay, so I don't see the exact shape she used, so I am going to use this wave shape just as something a little bit different. And I'm going to change my thickness. Again, I can type in that thickness. I can type inside that little wave. I'm going to center it over here, and I'm going to lastly change my fill color, Oop, and I'm going to change my font color so that that is in there as well. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in that box along the bottom. 
because she has that remember. Okay, now you'll notice that I'm lined up on the right hand side, but I actually want to carry this off the edge all the way like that. And I'm going to leave a little bit of white space on the bottom. I'm also going to raise this up a little bit. Now you'll also notice that some new measurement tools are popping up that show me how much my box compares to other things that are on the page. So for example, if I wanted this area here in white to match this area down here, I could do that. I could add in those pieces and use my measurement tools to give me the right size. So I am again going to change my font, I'm sorry, my background to black, and I'm going to change my font color to white before I start typing. And now I can type remember. Now, I want this piece here to be the same font that matches up there, that matched my to-do list for today, and I'm going to blow it up nice and big so that it takes up most of my space. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a secondary text box, which is what Carolyn did also. And I'm going to make sure that my text box is the thickness of my black square. And I'm doing that because I want to maximize the space that I'm going to type in. I'm going to change my text color to white. And this way I'm just going to put a placeholder and say, say um, any other reminders place here. Okay. So now you'll notice that my new agenda box looks a lot like her old agenda. Now, is one better than the other? Absolutely not. But here's the thing. On hers, if I want to change the background, if I want to change the blue complete this to-do list, I can't do that. If I want to change the blue to-do list on mine, I can make it anything I want. Okay. Now that's great. Like I said, now you can customize everything that's in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one other thing today. And that one other thing is talking about editing the master slide. So let's say um, you want to keep using the same slide over and over and over again, but you don't want these reminder pieces in there. Like you know exactly what's going to go on your to-do list. You know exactly where to put the date, so on and so forth. If you want to do that, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy what I just did and I'm going to paste it down here. And I'm going to remove all the parts that I don't want to appear every single time. So I'm going to remove that and I'm going to remove this piece here. Okay, so now I have this nice blank uh, layout for my agenda. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to select everything on the page, Control A. I'm going to copy everything, Control C. Okay, you're going to go up to slide, you're going to come down to edit master, and you're going to click on edit master. Now, I love using the edit master feature, and what it does is it goes into the background of a particular theme and allows you to modify anything about that theme so that every time you use that particular slide style, this particular thing occurs. So for example, you can see all the way back up here, here's the master, here's what the master will look like if you do like the first level seven. seven. If you want to make your master title slide have a particular font or a particular background, etc. The one I'm working with is the blank, which is all the way at the bottom. I am going to paste in everything I just copied from my slide. And as soon as I hit, it saves it automatically so you don't have to worry about hitting save. As soon as you hit the little X, you come back to your agenda. So let's say you start with, all. I'm going to get rid of all my slides. Okay? So now I have no slides. It's a brand new, um, it's a brand new file. I'm sorry, it's, I just started. I come in here, I click new, and you'll notice that blank is now not blank. It's now an agenda. So my agenda is already set up for me. So now I can change my name to be agenda template. So now I have an agenda template. And so now every time I open this file up, blank will already be pre-formatted for me. Now I know that I can put in my text box and put a text box here. And this can be today's date. 
because I already know that that's what's going to go in there. I can insert my text box for whatever I want my to-do list to look like, whether I want it to be checklists, check boxes, or numbered bullets, or anything like that. I can remember, and I can now I can put a word of awesome in there, or whatever I can do. But here's the thing about it. Everything's locked. So I can't move anything that was part of my background. That's what Carolyn did to hers. So I can't change the colors. I can't do anything. However, I can go back into my slide and edit my master. And if I edit my master and I say, okay, well, I want this box to no longer be this weird orange color. I want it to be some sort of bright red because today is whatever, fire safety day. I can do that. And you'll notice that it automatically changed my slide on the left-hand side. And it doesn't matter how many I have in here. Okay, if I go in and edit my master and I change that color, all of them will automatically switch for me. It's a one and done type of situation. It's not slide by slide. Okay, so it's great if you want to do that. Now, if you, so this would be great if you take your agenda template and you say, okay, for the month of November, I'm going to do orange and brown themes. Boom, shoof, you can do all your slides all at once, pre format all of them, done. So the editing master is really nice. It also works great if you use a template from Google or slidescarnival.com or anything like that because you can go into their master and make changes to their master slides. And so that this way, every single time you use, let's say, like title only, it comes up with a specific format that you formatted for yourself. So hopefully now you can go and play around with it. Um, in other videos, I'll show you how to modify some of the shapes that are already here in Google Slides to make it work better for your style. So you can customize and create your own new shape. Um, so I'll show you some grouping tools, but all those kinds of things. But again, you know, thank you to Carolyn for the... Uh, for the inspiration on her free Teacher Paid Teacher site. Um, I will have the link to her TPT on here as well, along with um, you know the link to this, the, to my slideshow, I'm sorry, Google Slides that I created here if you want to copy mine as well. Thanks everybody.